Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Susan Winter. Welcome to my show. Today, we're talking about the perks of being single. And right off the bat, I got to thank the wonderful people who are here. David is a first timer. Kylie's here. Patricia, E.T. Who else do I have here? Vic. Vic, thanks for joining us. E.T. I know from Munich, from the meet and greet. Catherine is here. Kylie. Uh, let's see. Katarina and Mr. M. Oh, no, I'm sorry. M.R. Topra. So everyone, nice to have you here today. So many of you are out there looking for love or you wouldn't have relationship experts such as myself. But I want you to know that there is a, another side to the process of getting love and having love. And that involves a really fulfilling life for yourself. I do realize with the clients I work with, both male and female, I, I realize that there's a lot of social pressure that is around being partnered. We live in a couple's world. I tried to go on a cruise uh, and get a nice suite. I have to pay for two people. I'm one, not gonna be, I don't eat the food, not drinking the booze, I've got to pay for a single. I mean, I've gotta pay for a double. But you know, in most cases, we have people that feel an urgency, a pressure from the outside world to partner, whether it's the right person or not. I just did a video on FOMO, dating FOMO, and I think people really fear being alone, not because everybody's inherently lonely, but because of what it they think it says about their worth as an individual. For example, when a woman is single, she's unwanted, undesirable. When a man is single, he's still playing the field and looking around. And this is how it goes. I have clients, especially my South Asian clients, who are under a lot of pressure from their families to partner. And if somebody is over 25 and she's a female and not married, wow, she's really like her life. She should have done better by now. And I want you to all understand that if you have now found your perfect partner, and many of you have written me that you've met somebody great, that's wonderful. But for those of you who are single, I beg you, I urge you to listen to the six things I'm going to share with you, to be content with where you are. Because if you are on this channel, like the other channels here seeking relationship advice, I can tell you the best way to find the highest quality of partner is to be at the peaceful, happy, fulfilled place in your own life. Okay, I'm gonna take the first one. Hi, how are you? I know what this is. Hi, Julian. Hello, everybody. Gotta be lucky. Mick lurked in today. <laughs> I'm so excited for this topic. Once, um, often once one embraces being single, the right person appears. It is magical. And Jillian, thank you so much. Jillian is happily partnered. And I love it when the people come back like Zen Maiden One and Jillian come back to share their stories that they've been through it and they come back. But you have one constant person in your entire life and it is yourself. And you are going to go with yourself from you know, birth to grave. And if you have people around you, it's fabulous. If you have a partner or you have several partners in the course of a lifetime, it's all wonderful. So I strongly suggest that you take a look at some of the things I'm going to present. And by the way, I did a video a long time ago called um, something about what what things you need to know about being single or, or what nobody tells you about being single that's really great. Every time I have a married friend, especially with babies, all the time they would say to me, oh my God, you're so lucky. You get to go to bed when you want to. You can just like go to sleep. You, you get to do what you want to do. You don't have to ask five people how they feel about it. So please don't bemoan the fact that, oh my God, I'm not partnered. Everybody, Sylvia's got a guy and you know, Mark has a girlfriend. Oh my God. Just let's look at what you do have. And just like Jillian said, kind of up the quality of the entire experience of your life. All right. Now, let's start with this. Freedom. As a single person, you have the luxury to do what you want to do without having to clear it with somebody else. 
You may have wonderful partners, but I'm sure many of you have had lousy partners or moody partners. I have had partners who are difficult. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've had a couple that are wonderful, but basically people get into moods. This is even goes with friends, you know, and their bad mood can affect everything. Maybe they don't want to go to something or you want to go to something and they don't. And so you have freedom. If you want to sleep until 10, you can do that. And their alarm is not going off because they want to wake up and run at 5.30 in the morning. If you want to go out with your friends, have a night out. You don't have to ask permission or say, you know, is it okay? I don't want to upset you, but maybe I'll be coming home around. It depends on the nature of your relationship and how you have it constructed. But as a single person, every decision you make is for you. You never have to compromise or negotiate. As a partnered person, Amending your choices will be on the menu for the duration of your relationship. It doesn't mean that you lose yourself, but you will be altering your dominant choice to work with your partner and they are doing the same with you. You too may love hiking and then you're lucky, but you may have to go visit his cousin for some event and you're really can't stand the ant and you've just got to smile because you know, you're the partner and you got to be there. So understand that you have ultimate freedom. And for those of you who find yourself in a situation ship, they are single because they are taking the ultimate freedom to see you when they want to and not, and they are acting like a single person while they're sleeping with you. So that's what a situation ship is acting like I'm single, but I'm with another person. All right. Okay. Hi. Love you lots from the UK. Thank you so much. I admire how you said marriage isn't for you. Can you elaborate on that more? Oh, good God. That's a whole topic. I am a senior citizen. And in my time period, there was one route. You get married and you have children. And I knew that once I did that for me, there was no other choice that would, I know how obsessed I am by the way I take care of Nika and my dogs and everything else. I would live for those kids and I couldn't help myself. And I had a sense as a four or five, six year old, it was not popular. Oh, it, it was not allowed basically socially in my world. It was not allowed. And I told my very first social lie at age six, sitting on my dad's horse trailer to Ruthie Pagel, my neighbor, she came from a big Polish Catholic family and they had like 10 kids and grandma and grandpa lived with them. She said, how many kids do you want when you grow up? And it struck terror in me because that would be marriage. And I remembered thinking who I am and what I feel is not okay. I knew instinctively it's not okay to say my truth. I got that message. My mother had a fabulous life. My dad was the most wonderful man in the world. I mean, this is like the primo end of society. So I don't know where that came from, but I knew I'd lose myself. I was absolutely right on that. And it took a lot of effort to, I, I was the poor girl that got every, every, I didn't want to be married. I caught every bouquet at a wedding, trying not to catch it. I got every marriage proposal. My father was just by that. But remember, this I'm not special. This is the time. So don't think, oh my God, Susan walks around the world, gets marriage proposals. I was marriage material. Well-bred, well-educated, good genes, intelligent, all that stuff. Good family. What's not to like? But my poor father had to turn down all these proposals because that is what one did. The bottom line is, whether it had been, been me knowing that I'm gay, I knew I couldn't say it in that time period. Whether it was me knowing that I'm different somehow, maybe I'm in the wrong body, I couldn't say it. I knew that, and so I covered. So that was my truth for that time period. And all I knew is I needed my freedom to find my life, which I thought and believe to this day would have been hampered by that vehicle. In 2000, my dog Walker, I asked her if she was, she was getting married to her guy and she goes, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be married. And I was like, I, nobody had ever asked, do we want this? It was a given. So that's the long story and I'm sorry to go off into that, but I'm trying to answer that for you. 
but it is not about my truth. It is about your truth. There are those who must be married and they will not be happy if they don't have a family. And that is family life. And that is the richness and the sweetness of connection and belonging. There are those who must be partnered. And without that, they don't feel like they're living a fulfilled life. In part, the discussion today that I wanna to bring to you is how to feel fulfilled if you are in the interim or how to make peace with it. If you are taking the time to be single by choice, I want people to understand that single is a valid, valuable place. It is. It can be a, tradi a tr transitional place, or it can be a decision, a lifestyle choice. The point is that you come here with yourself, and you must honor yourself and your truth and do what you know is right for you. If you have an overwhelming need to have a child, but you don't really see marriage, I mean, try to figure out what do I want and need? What is the thing that's really going to bring me joy? What, what, you know, what is living to me? Um, and then that'll be, bring your answer. Most people do want to be partnered. I have an ability to live alone in great peace. It is work for me to socialize. I'm an introvert, believe it or not, because I feel a lot of things going around me. But I feel very connected to all of you because I'm in a realm where I can share something that I hope is helpful. And when I see that it's helpful, I get inspired to want to share more. So that's how it works for me. So now enough about me. Oh, enough to I can relate to this so much. I never wanted to get married or to have kids and ironically attached to men who wanted to get married, multiply. That's okay. So now we just talk about what it's like to not be desperate. You're not desperate. You don't want it. So they can't wait to pin you down and have you. Okay, Jordy. Hi. Hi, everyone. I've been single so long. I'm worried that I'm too happy now to date. Half joking, excited to watch. Let's talk about that. Um, Lauren, my beloved media director, and many of you who do Instagram, sometimes Lauren's talking to you, sometimes it's me. Uh, you know, sometimes we identify ourselves, sometimes we don't. But, you know, she said she knows more and know more women who are 38, 39, 40 who are just like, I kind of really like my life. Now, let's put it in the context of our time period. Wouldn't it be easier if people were more agreeable? It would be a lot easier to want to date if you didn't think you'd be ghosted, conned, I mean, used, treated horribly, suddenly dumped, gaslit, breadcrumbed, you know, I, I mean, it's just like, it has become so crazy nowadays. Some people are saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. If this is what I'm getting, I'm good. And for those of you who are saying, you know, that out there is nuts. Until I see somebody that's not nuts and they're going to work with me and I see a decent, polite, civil, well-composed, responsible human being that wants what I want and they want it with me until I know I got that, eh, I'm really happy. I'm happy with myself. Okay, so let me continue. Yes, agreeable, honest, kind. Yeah, if I wasn't treated so cray, it would be a lot easier. Okay, so I started with freedom. You have the freedom to come and go as you want. Now, the one I like the best this one was given to me by the security team that came today. I've got this like system in here. It's like this Israeli security system. There's stuff on the outside that you see. There's stuff you never know is on the inside. These 360 things with laser. I mean, this house is tripped out. The guy said to me, so I'm, they're, they're here working on the house. And I said, so um, are you single? What do you like about being single? And the guy turns to me, he goes, my sanity. <laughs> my sanity. And I said, elaborate. He said, I know I can walk in the door of my house and relax. I don't put one step in the door and get yelled at for something. I have no idea what's going on. He said, yeah, being single means I have my sanity. So I just, I love that. And I had to share it with you. And that is one person's opinion, but actually it's a little more resonant Nowadays, isn't it with all the nutty stuff that's going on? I mean, your peace, uh, let's not just sanity, your serenity, your well being, your evenness 
to know that, I mean, if you're on a ride with somebody that's making you go high and low and they're in and out, the push, pull, hot, cold, it'll make a healthy person think they're losing their minds. It will take a normal, well-adjusted, healthy person and they will turn into an animal. I have had a man bring out the animal in me. True story, in a negligee beating on the, the hood of his trunk in the middle of the night, screaming, me, calm, rational Susan. And I looked at myself and I said, I'm not crazy. This person is making me crazy. This, per well, he was crazy actually, he was going crazy, but he was making me crazy, okay? So you don't have to live like that, all right? Okay, now if you have any questions, be uh, go ahead and ask them. I will be looking for them. I think my mods are gone today. I don't know where they are. Oh no, I don't have my mods here today. I hope they're okay. Gnarly Cat, how you doing, hon? Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. Rahul says, I'm single since a decade after bad breakup and happy ever since. Relationships stress me out. The wrong relationships stress us out. And what I worry about with so many people is that I just did um, a video. The last video was on FOMO. Uh, one of the guys who wrote me said that he's got dating FOMO. Like, oh, my God, if I don't get this one, maybe I'll get no one. And I didn't like him that much. But, you know, what if I don't have anybody? So I talk about it like musical chairs. Um, but if the people you're meeting are so irrational, unpredictable, horrific in their behavior, you are better off taking a, a time out. Hi, honey. I think this is Nafthusa. Sweet woman, $5. Thank you so much, my dear. I think it'd be easier to be socially single if people want to also prioritize uh, friendships. Seems like many of them come with an agenda. I agree. I agree. I've had that horrific experience myself as well. Yes. Yep. 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 I agree. So we've got freedom and we've got sanity and that is worth a lot. Okay. I'm going to read through a couple more. If you live with somebody or you have somebody come over, sleep. How many people snore? Yep. You got a partner that snores. You got a partner that gets up first thing in the morning. You got a partner that's restless. You got a partner that goes to the bathroom all the time. Maybe they go to bed at a different time. I, I had a, a lovely guy that I was briefly involved with, but he did, he closed up the clubs. He was a manager of clubs in New York, restaurants and bars. I mean, he was coming in at four o'clock, two, two thirty, three, four. And I'm like, I, I can't live this way. I'm up in the morning writing. And it just, it was not a lifestyle. If, had we had a 5,000 square foot home and I was not in a one bedroom in Manhattan, you know, I could do it, but I mean, imagine if you're in a studio. I know people live together in the studio. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, you two, you're, it, this is an amazing story. Sleep. You can sleep through the night. That is a benefit. And many of you, I'm sure you're not sleeping well because of your partner. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I know this is another one. I see this. Kylie. Hi, hon. Three euro, a uh, uh, five euro. Sorry. I have a huge crush on a guy 24 years younger. Yes, yes, it can be contagious. Not my fault, not my fault. I bought online course from him. He lives in the UK, but coming to Spain September on holiday. What should I do in the meantime? Well, does he want to, is he coming to see you or is he coming on vacation? If he's coming to see you, continue to date with the understanding that maybe something will occur when we're together. If he's just coming, to your country, what does that mean? Maybe you're somebody that he likes to sell courses to. I don't know. I don't know the level of interest. You have to see, is this person's interest monetary or is it romantic? And if it's romantic, what do you know about this person? Have you watched what they do? Have you read reviews on who the person? But go ahead, by all means, meet them. But this is not a commitment, right? This is not a commitment to like, I won't date until you come. Just enjoy him, talk to him, get together for tea or espresso or tapas or whatever, and, and see what happens. In the meantime, to talk to him. Does he like older women? Or does he like you? And you happen to be older. That's a whole thing too. All right? It is not that. So excited you're talking about this topic because I just thought the other day, 
what would I want my life to be like if I was going to be single for the rest of my life? Tristan Marie, it's a great, great question. Let me talk about future self right now. So in the mornings, I listen to podcasts that really inspire me. My good buddy, Jordan Harbinger, has a great show. And I get the little quick ones. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy does one called, I think, something, the future self. Um, and he's of the, um, uh, what are they? Uh, uh, something like um, vocational psychologists or, you know, corporate psychologists that study um so if you want to know what your life is going to be like, what we do is imagine what we want to achieve, what we would real our end goal of what we want to experience maybe five years from now, and then reverse design it backwards. So what he says is that our lives will always be the same and with incremental differences. If everything we're doing today is what we do tomorrow and the next day, we'll we'll have some changes, but they'll be fairly minor. Pretty much what we've got is a version of what we'll have. But if we want something that we don't yet have in our lives, say a dynamic single life, or I want to explore the world with like-minded people that are agreeable, or I want to be hiking all these different places and that's my thing, then if you create, you start to create that vision, then you create the steps that you need to take now to become that. So if you think you might want to be single, they're single by default because I haven't found anybody and I'm not going to settle. And then they're single by choice because I actually enjoy this lifestyle. I'm not closed to the possibility, but I'm not even interested in bothering to look. But should it actually come my way, yeah, I, I will notice it. So at that point, then your goal would be to absolutely craft a life that is thrilling. What was it you were hoping a relationship would give you? A sense of belonging? Then find a group where you have a deep sense of belonging. Was it that maybe your relationship would give you a sense of family? Create a sense of family with the people or your interaction in the world. Were you hoping that it would align and the two of you would co-create and you'd have a purpose that was greater than yourselves? And that the two of you together, then find those individuals or find a way to create a community, a nonprofit, anything to create that feeling that you want. So when we isolate it to it has to be romantic. That's like riding the bronc in the rodeo. Oh, no, riding the steer, even worse than the bucking bronc. Okay. It may work. It may not. Does that mean that forever our life remains unfulfilled because we didn't attain a person? So if it is the goal, the dream that you want, go for the dream. Go straight for the dream. Maybe in your dream you only had, oh, I want to take off and travel Spain for an entire summer, but I have no one to go with. Well, either find a group or a person or different people or go by yourself. Find places that give you whatever you want and just don't wait for somebody to bring it to you. Importing our life is a nightmare. So I love this question. And uh, let me go back. Okay. Freedom, sanity, sleep. Okay. Lazy. You can be lazy. You can be off duty. You can be completely self-indulgent. You know, for, for we females and for the men that really are metrosexual, you can have a face mask on. You can have your pajamas on. Guys, you don't have to shave. I know a lot of you don't even like to take a shower on the weekends. You can, you know, fart in bed. You can walk around. You can eat potato chips. You can stay in dirty clothes. You can absolutely be any version of yourself without having to be on point. Pretty, smelling good and all that. You can just, you can be a sloth if you want. It doesn't matter. So... There's a lot of joy in one of the, I rarely have ever take time off, but I'd had a surgery and I couldn't see and, and I couldn't see well. So I had two pair of glasses on and the biggest, <laughs> like it was on like zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And I could barely type. So I decided I'm not going to do this. Right. I stayed in my pajamas and I listened to podcasts and it was Christmas time. I didn't leave the house. I mean, I walked Nika, obviously. Um, I was, I had this weird feeling. And I didn't quite know what it was. And then I isolated it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm happy. I was so happy. 
I couldn't really work. I wasn't on the, I had, you know, I didn't have the computer yakking at me. I took off from counseling people because I wasn't sure how I'd feel. I actually had like what you might call a vacation. And I had this weird feeling like, oh my God, life is so beautiful. I was rested. I was happy. <laughs> I mean, is that crazy? Oh my goodness. Who is this $25? David Atkinson, you lovely, lovely man. You are so generous. I have a question, but wanted to say thanks. Oh, no question. I figure after all the years of amazing ideas to think about and process, I should give you a small gift. You lovely, generous, beautiful human being. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely, I, I adore this with all of my heart. I appreciate it so much. I love hearing the stories of people I have never met. I have never coached. I've never counseled. And they got benefit from like a video that helped them. Super. I can't be everywhere. If I could be like a doctor, a traveling doctor, little house on the prairie and do emergency service, I'd come to all of your houses, fix you up as best I can and leave. So this is the best version of urgent care that I know. And I hope it works. And David, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all of you who contribute, whether it's that you're in my YouTube family and you're a monthly member or whatever it is. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, let's see. I want to make sure that I get everyone today. Okay. Uh, let's see. So Jillian, I did this. We had lovely David here. Uh, Clara says, can't wait to hear the perks of being single. I'm single. Uh, you're looking good for a senior. Love the hair. Thanks, Clara from New York, New York City too. I'll be there in a couple of weeks. I have an older sister that never wanted to get married or have kids. She seems happy and close to age 50. You know, sometimes when you really know what you want, it, it's okay. I, I, you know, I'm a relationship expert. This is kind of a controversial topic for me to discuss with all of you. But I want you to understand that life goes on. We will lose partners. We leave them. They leave us. People pass. I've had a number. I've actually had two people that I have done grief counseling to. Not that I, I am not a grief counseling specialist, but I have lost those I have loved. That, like, it's a tremendous thing. So I understand when you lose your person, the only person that made you feel strong, safe, secure, the only person that could see you the way you wanted to be seen. And, and you know, it's like you have to start all over again. But... Fortunately, those of us, if we can retain ourselves, this is a very good thing. Freedom, sanity, sleeping. Okay, where are we going now? Okay, you're all talking to each other. <laughs> okay, let's see. And lazy, relax, off duty. Let's talk about their problems. Okay. You know how many times I'd come home? I was in a great mood and my partner would be surly and mad, something happened, something was no good, and now we both have to be sad because it was offensive if I was having a good day. And I couldn't share my good day because we were sad that day. And I'm just like, I was feeling great. So the downside of having a partner is when they're miserable, they can easily make your life miserable. Okay. It's not like you can escape them. You probably live together, you're together, you've got ongoing things. And the upside of partnership is that we want to have somebody to lean back on to share our troubles as well as our good times. But oftentimes in a relationship, many of you know, if you're not in a great relationship, if you're in a mm, too bad relationship, you get nothing but their problems. And now you've got your life to handle as well as their life to handle. You've got your mood, which can be stable and happy and their mood, which could be like walking on eggshells. Are they going to get pissed off? What can I do? You know, I can't tell you how many people I have had in my life that have had this kind of disposition where I spend the majority of my time amending myself to their behavior to modulate a normality in the peace scope, because if they're pissed off or bad in their mood, then my life is horrific. Yes, I was younger. Yes. And when I didn't know what to do after all that, I would take a break from all dating till I sorted myself out. Okay. What do we, okay. 220. Thank you so much. I think that, I think that is 
Indian money. I, but I am so, so, so grateful. I think that's very generous. Thank you so much, Susan. Smriti, 28 this year. Congratulations. Absolutely terrified of being single. And I'm really working on myself to embrace this period of singleness. Very scared that there may be no hope. How do I cope? First of all, you are in a culture where being single is not understood. And, and it's not given any kind of um, credence. It I do, I've got so many clients from all over the world, from MENA, from to Middle East to, to, I mean, North Africa, Asia, you name it, everywhere. And I do know that in your culture, people partner. We don't know, we know how to handle a widow. We don't know how to handle you. We don't know how to handle a widow. We can handle a widower. We don't know how to handle you. And Oftentimes, this is why people resort to having a match made for them and that their families choose. And I had a lovely client in Vancouver who was 28 or 29 and thought her life was over. Thankfully, she was in Vancouver and, and you know, in Canada, the, the idea that that's still a young woman who's vibrant and vital, but in her family life, they looked at her as a failure. So you have the fact that you're single, which... My question to you is this, can you discern the difference between your wishing you had a partner, just you, only for you to have a companion and the unbelievable pressure that your society puts on you to have that partner? Because I think if you really looked at this and the implications of what it means in your world, it can mean I'm not, I do not believe this is being true. So watch my words again. I do not believe that this is the true, but this is my understanding. It means that you're unwanted, undesired, that you have no future. You have no life. You'll never get married because you're past your, you know, your age stamp, right? Like best used by date. You might have been partnered if you found somebody you found agreeable. Many of the marriages that you see and partnerships are not with people that are happy, but they settled out of pressure, external pressure, external pressure that might tell you to be straight when you know you're not, external pressure that might tell you that you need to, I don't know, have children when that's not right for you. So whatever it is, try to, when you, we, when you turn off the show today, try to sit down with yourself and write and say, what is the difference? How much of my feeling horrible is from them, from what I've heard, what I've learned, from what my family says, my relatives say, my society says, my married friends say, how much of that is coming from them? And how much is really, truly like, I'm going to die if I'm 28. Because I think you're going to find a major discrepancy. And if you're buying into drinking that Kool-Aid from some social, no, um, one of, the te one of the items I have in my merch shop, when you go into spread shop, uh, there's only a few items that show on the YouTube page, but one of them is a quote that I love that I wrote I don't know, 20, 20 some years ago. We are servants only to our dreams, not to society's expectations. I'm going to say it again. We are servants only to our dreams, not to society's expectations. So is the dream that you want to be married because you really want to be married? If so, let's work on it. I really can get a coaching, just bite the bullet and do it. Otherwise, discern the difference between what they tell you you have to have to be accepted as a human being in this world, in their world, and what you really want. Okay. Um, this friend of mine has been acting hot and cold. One day he's interested. The next time cold, I told him I like him. And his response is, don't, I, don't idealize me. I can be an asshole. Was I rejected? No, my dear, you hit the jackpot. This is the best human being in the world. I don't think I've ever found a nicer person. You got the, the man is telling you he's an asshole and you need confirmation of that. When somebody tells you they're an asshole, do you know what that means? I know I'm a dick and I don't give a shit about it. I don't care how it affects you. I like being a dick. I'm a dick. These are people we should run from. When you see this, it's like danger, danger, warning, warning. 
Yeah, I mean, this is insane. Were you rejected? Yeah. He told you, I'm a dick. If you come forward, if you play with me, I will hurt you. I don't care about you. Uh, uh, you know, don't put me on a don't put me on a pedestal because I certainly don't belong. Thank you for the truth. Thank you. You're a dick. You're an asshole. Good. Thanks. You saved me time. Run as fast as you can. Cut off all contact. Oh, right. One more thing. Thanks for telling me you're an asshole. I thought that was the case, but thanks for the confirmation. I kind of felt that, and then you, and then you cut him off. No, no, no. That's a no go. No go. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's see. Um, let's see. He treats me very, but he treats me very nicely. I'm lost. I, what do you mean you're lost? He's an asshole one minute and he's nice the next. That's schizophrenic. And I've had a schizophrenic boyfriend. I would suggest you don't do it. It is impossible. Super chat by Annie QT. Where is Annie? Oh, Annie, I don't see you, honey. Annie, QT, $5. Thank you so much, honey. Um, I don't have my mods here today, so celebrate the first Super Chat from Annie Q. <laughs> Celebration. I know my mods aren't here today, so I, I don't know. Okay, thank you so much for that. Oh, I love this. My friends are helping me out here. Hello, uh, Conquistador Chevalier. Hello, Susan and all from the UK. I enjoy being in a stable relationship, but I find it hard to find someone who's stable. Yes, you are so right. I don't expect perfection. I'm not perfect either, but happy to be single. Okay. So here's the question. I've done videos on this before. There is a time to settle if you are of that disposition. And there is a time to not settle. There are people who, because of the unbelievable social pressure in their group might find that being single is so painful and excludes them from so much of the activities in the life that they want, that they will partner with anybody, anybody just to have somebody. I have a friend who did that. She has basically been miserable for the last 30 years. And she knows that her husband is with her for not the right reasons. He's with her for the money and everything that she brings to him. And she's the most loving, kind, sweet person. And no matter how he's cheated on her, treated her poorly, or been, oh, I love the thing where he spent the infertility money that she was trying to get pregnant, spent all the money on his hair transplants because they were more important than having a child with her. Yeah, that was, I think, the, the thing that made me really... But this woman's greater fear is being alone. And so because she didn't have a lot of options, she took it. And I think there are times that she's happy. I do think there are times that they're good together. But there is a price for every decision we make. Be very clear about this. There's a price for being single. It's great. You've got your freedom. You've got your sanity. You can be lazy. You can fart in bed. You can do anything you want. But sometimes it's inconvenient because everybody's going someplace and you know you don't have a partner and you're the weird one at the table. You can't hang out with your two friends because you're the third person. That does not work out well. So it's a lot of stuff going on, right? And there are those moments where you know, you're know you gonna be hunting for a plus one or you just always go by yourself. But then there are the times, the upside to that is that you are living the life you want to live without compromise and without amending or squashing yourself to accommodate their moods or their disposition because people have their good days and they certainly have their bad days. If you have the right partner with a great disposition who brings out the best in you, that is beautiful. But remember, partnership has a price and so does being single. But what we're trying to do is live the best life we have right now. Whatever it is, whether we're partnered, whether we're starting to see somebody, or we're currently single, or we're, whether we've decided to be single by choice, how can we enrich the experience we have? Because what I really, 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 really don't want any of you to feel is, oh my God, I'm a failure. Oh my God, everybody's got somebody I don't. You know, all my friends are getting married. Oh my God, oh my God. I, like, what am I going to do? I don't want you to feel like you're on a life raft in the middle of the ocean, just holding on because there is a rich world around you, but I want you to, you 
have to date yourself. You have to be good to yourself. You have to take care of yourself. And you need to reach out a little bit and find like-minded people where you enjoy being with them. A great thing about a city as opposed to the suburbs. In a city, there are people who are single and they're single at all different ages. And there are people who are married and coupled and still get together with single people. When you're in the suburbs, it's pretty much married couples. And there might be a few, you know, that are being recycled and they're currently single, but it's much less. And especially the age group determines this too. So get into an environment where you have the opportunity to meet people, even just to hang out with. Okay, I hope I'm not missing anybody else's messages here. <laughs> Natalie Campbell, I've been single for so long that I don't know if I'd ever be comfortable uh, with someone else as I am just with myself. Girl, I hear you. I hear you. I have been loved and I have loved and I can love again. But I tell you, I, after dating players, it was it was excruciating. I got the information, brought home brought home the FYI, but you know, it's exhausting. And then sometimes it's just really not. I wanted to focus on my career. Every man I had, I was building his career. Yeah, great. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought, what could I do on my own? So yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now, any other questions? I'm under no pressure for my family, just it's pressure I have on myself. Yeah, SSI 95, you better think about that. It's in your thought system. Now, this is why I like uh, cog behavioral cognitive therapy. I want, um, somehow you have attached in your mind that that means something. It means that you're less desirable or that you're unworthy or something like that. S-E-K, hi, 100. Veronica Carlson, thank you so much, my dear. Mwah, 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 mwah. You wonderful people. I'm okay being single, but I really long for a meaningful relationship. Fantastic. That's why you're here on this channel. Okay. I find myself not trusting the universe with this. I only meet, I only met almost guys who like me, but are not ready. Thoughts? Yes. The answer is in the question. You are only looking for locked and loaded partners. You are looking for somebody who on their profile, when they first meet you says, look, I, I'm looking for a relationship. If they are not intentional, run like hell and stop. Stop communication. Be very clear. I'm looking for a partner. I'm looking for somebody who's open to partnership, not in the future, now. And that's all I want. Be ruthless about it. Look, at it's like buying a house, right? They want to send you a log cabin, but you want this white house with a picket fence. Or if you only want a, a cabin in the mountains and they're trying to sell you this high-end condo with glass to floor to ceiling and you want rustic, don't let somebody talk you into something you don't want. The minute somebody hesitates or says, I don't know, or maybe, or yeah, you know, I sometime I can see that, that's a no. You have not been paired with people who want what you want. So you need to do a little digging with where you find people. What sites would people be on who really want to get married and partnered? What sites would they be on? Where would they be? And so look for that. And also query all of your friends and associates and see if they know anybody nice. Enough to say, thank you, my darling. Another $5. You're so wonderful. I'm single because my ex made me think when we buried the hatchet, he marked the exact spot. Having peace in your life and happiness is priceless. Oh, wow. I, I don't quite understand what that reference means, I'm afraid, but he marked the exact spot. I, I, I am so sorry. I've heard the words before, but I don't understand the reference. But having peace in your life and happiness is priceless. Whatever this ex did or made you feel, um, you must remember that is one person's opinion and it's their perspective. And quite, I mean, hang on, I'm just looking for something to clean my glasses and I don't have it. Okay. Um, you know, our truth is subjective 
My reality is the way I see my reality. Your reality is completely different. And the reality of your ex was what worked for his, for his life, for his understanding, and for his agreement with his own values or thought process. So whatever it is, when you start a sentence with, my ex made me think, that's, that's, that's your uh, can opener to get out of that can. My ex made me think anything that falls after that is bullshit, right? Not true. My ex made me think my ex, my ex who was a pro bodybuilder, made me think I was undesirable. That I was, uh, let's see, what did you say? I had a bad metabolism. I had uh, short attachments or long attachments or whatever what wasn't right. And I had to work like hell to look average. And I had a scar on my stomach from an ectopic pregnancy from him. My birth control method didn't work. That goes you know, across my stomach. He said, no man would ever want me because it would look like I did something sexual that was deviant or like bad. Yeah, he said that. I knew the scar thing wasn't true. I didn't like it, having a scar across my body when there had been none. Um, I did my part. I was on birth control. Things happened. I uh, nearly died because of it. But the being unattractive, undesirable, and having a disgusting physique, that played into everything I believed growing up and was kind of true. But I've held that with me for a lifetime. And even when I was a fitness model and a fantasy action figure, I, it was the only time that I could look at myself and just not carry that burden. But that was a control mechanism. I have a very strong feeling that this is a control mechanism too, that even if your ex can't be with you, they had an innate desire to destroy your future happiness because if they can't have you, they don't want anybody to. That's my feeling. That's, that's what I'm reading into this. And I, I hope that helps you. But the minute any, you start, my ex made me feel, the rest of it is to their benefit, to control, harm, hurt, vengeance, whatever, okay? So it's, bottom line, it's a non-truth. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, I wanna make sure that I'm getting everything. Uh, let me see. Good for you, Cassie. Gnarly Cat, you're talking to everybody. Wow, the bodybuilder boyfriend was a real gent. This is terrible, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he, yeah, mm -hmm. I know, that's okay. I was on Guiding Light too. He wanted to make sure I got off all TV shows. My problem was I actually appeased him. I don't know why. I didn't need him for anything. My apartment, my money, my rent. Didn't have a loving family and a lot of friends, so I need attention. Hang on. And a lot of care from my partners as well as cuddles. I feel lost until I have a boyfriend. Da-ta. I would go, ta-da, instead. But, um... Wow. Here's the thing. When we isolate our happiness in any one thing, a person, a job, a car, a home, uh, a PhD, and we think the acquisition of this thing, if I just had this thing, I'd be happy. If I just had money, I'd be happy. If I were just 10 pounds thinner, I'd be happy. If I were just famous, I'd be happy. Whatever it is, right? That is always out of our hands because it's external. I know you want cuddles. There are, okay, I haven't done it personally, but my friend, one of my clients in uh, Silicon Valley does cuddle circles. He pays to have a professional cuddler. Just come and cuddle him. I, I mean, it's a thing. Uh, I don't know where you live, but it's a thing here in the U.S. And it's non-sexual. Okay, there are cuddle parties, those, I don't know how, but there are actual professional cuddlers. And as far as that, I, you know, if you have an animal, a bunny rabbit, a kitty cat, a doggy, you want to feel loved, get something to love. Really. I lived for 12 years without a dog. And you talk about alone, that the times that I was alone, I was really alone. There was nobody, nothing. Remember, my, I don't have my family's debt, okay? Right, that's it, I'm in. So um, that would be my, 
That would be my answer to that. I feel lost until I have a boyfriend. Data, okay, really flip that script because that puts your happiness in the hands of some maybe, right? And it also sets you up to take something rather than nothing, which is not good. Cece, thanks for sharing that story. You're a very special person. Thank you. Oh my God, no one ever deserves to hear that. So sorry what you went through. It's so funny. The more he tried to squash me, to keep me, and I realized I didn't know game. I was so naive. I was so young, so naive. And my dad loved me and I knew that. And I just thought of him. I mean, he loved me. He'd, he'd take the bullet for me. I knew that. But he was a very difficult person. And I think he loved my naivete, my purity, and my innocence. But he also berated me for it that I didn't know game. And I'm like, I'm from Minnesota. What do you mean game? I didn't know. I didn't have agenda. I didn't have agenda. Didn't know what agenda was. I'm still of the unfortunate thing that if you tell me, if your, if your bio says Harvard underneath it, I assume you went to Harvard. I don't know that you just got involved in some external business group that has that name. Because I actually think that my credits are real. If I've done it, I did it. I don't tell you I did something and make it something else. I got the proof. That's that's for real, right? So I believe when people say I'm a best-selling author, I, you know, I believe that. Or if they say I wrote a book, I believe that until I realize that they tell me that they paid somebody to do it and then they buy so many copies between all the authors that they push it to the New York Times bestseller list. So when I say I'm a best-selling author, I'm a best-selling author. But this is the thing. If we aren't like that, we believe it. So we cannot believe what people say. We just can't. And every time we want to rise, if you have people that make you feel lesser, now I know, thank you players, that's to make you stay. That's to make you think that, okay, I don't have another option. If you're in a miserable relationship or you're dating somebody because you're terrified of being lonely and that person is making you feel like you are so lucky, like, I don't normally date brunettes, but I'll date you. Or I don't normally date guys that aren't in shape, but I date you. I mean, already they're trying to subtly make you feel grateful that they're with you. Grateful. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. And then you are compliant and obedient. And they've got you locked in place for their safety and security. And as I have learned very late in life, but at least I learned it, they're the most insecure people. Why? I always have this saying. I used to tell people, nobody mugs the homeless guy. We don't mug him. Nothing to get. Nobody takes you down unless you're worth power and taking down, right? You're going to mug somebody on the street that's got nothing? Why? You mug somebody that looks like they've got something. So if you are in a partnership with that person is trying to take you down, it is because they want the power you have and they don't like the fact that you've got it. And God forbid you realize yourself, yeah, I do have options. You will leave them, right? Okay, enough of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. You're so awesome and gorgeous. I'm so happy to catch you live. Thank you, Jalapeno. I love the topic and love the chat room. You are awesome. Cheers to being single. Yes, uh, if, if that is the option you want, that is fantastic. Uh, oh, t- uh, am I missing this? Jillian sent me $10. Susan, there's a super chat from Annie QT above and ET and Kel- Kylie help, uh, helpfully also pointed out, also so glad the bodybuilder booger is out of your life. You're a gorgeous lady who deserves the best. Thank you. I am looking for this. Hang on. Super chat by UT. Okay. I miss the physical touch. Okay. What I miss most is that, thank you so much. They didn't come through. They didn't come through the super chat. Okay. All I can tell you is that um, super chat by Annie QT. What I miss most is the physical touch. Recently I injured my neck and my knee. Then it hit me. I have to pay people to touch me therapist and made me feel so lonely. I have a self care thing that used to be, I thought indulgent. I have a lady give me a massage every Saturday at four o'clock when I'm in Arizona. I do that to be good to myself. And when I'm there, we have great chat. She's a brilliant woman. She speaks multiple languages. She's so talented on so many different levels, but she's a great massage therapist. And I do that to love myself. So here's what I got to say to you. You 
are under the false misconception that love is an external experience. Love is completely, totally, and always be an internal experience. It is you experiencing love. It is not them giving you love. It is you in the experience of love. That's how we can love people who are unlovable and they don't love us back. We are feeling love within ourselves. And the one person who really, really, really needs love, independent of the neck injuries and everything else, is you. You need to love yourself enough that you're not so empty. You're begging somebody to touch you. And if you need to get a massage, it's not pathetic. I made sure that my mother had a massage every week of her life when she was older. My father died 20 years before my mother died. And the mas one massage therapist, when I happened to be in town visiting, said, do you realize I'm the only one that touches her? And I went, oh my God. She was like, I don't know if I should pay. It's a little expensive. I said, mom, let's do this. Every week, you've got to promise me. It's really good for your health. It's really good. You've got to do it. Because older people, they don't get touched. And it touch is definitely your love language. Definitely. So you need to find, please take me seriously. Don't just let it go in one ear out the other. Oh, they said it to me. Cuddles are good. Have people give you hugs. Okay. Did I miss anything else? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Okay, now do as I did you. Okay, I read everybody's. So if there are things in Super Chat that I'm not seeing, it's very strange. Okay, all right, onward we go. Onward, onward. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Susan, please tell me how to truly forgive myself and forget about this and truly move on. I would like you, I don't know the circumstance. Um, I'm catching what I can here, and this is about enjoying being single. But let me tell you, if you are having a breakup, I urge you, it is so much it is so much information for your Audible subscription. But if you subscribe to Audible, get my audio booklet. It's free on Audible. It's called Breakup Triage, The Cure for Heartache. It will walk you through what I think are the seven most profound steps. And if you don't have Audible, you can buy it for a couple of dollars. That's it. it. But it has exactly how to move on because you can't move on until you've processed the breakup or you process the fact that it's over. Okay, one more thing. Okay, their problems, their temper, and their quirks. That's the last of the six. Sometimes being with a partner, they're good days. But man, if you have a partner who is quick to flash and has a temper or is moody, and they can get that way, or they get pissy, or they're difficult, shut down, it will make your life miserable. So... I hope all of you know how to be good company to yourself. Julio, Bonillo, $5. Hello, Julio. Do you think someone has to experience heartbreak to be in a healthy relationship? Wow, I love this. I'm, I don't know. And I'm going to tell you that's the truth. I can tell you my experience. As a teenager, I had boyfriends. Well, we, we called them boyfriends, but I actually had a boyfriend. And he was really, really good looking and really nice to me. And I, I didn't know what love was. I mean, I loved my dad, but I didn't know, I didn't know the profound impact of love. And I was kind of a shitty girlfriend. I started dating his friend. I, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't, I was like in, I don't know, what was I, 11th, 12th grade. And I left him. I went to college. I suddenly realized, I went, oh my God, he is an amazing person. And my heart cracked open. I felt such enormous pain for not knowing, for just like, just being a kid. Uh, you know, just like one day you like this person, the next day you like that person. I didn't realize. Um, and the minute I realized the power of affection and that you can hurt somebody, the minute I was on the receiving end of a broken heart, I totally changed. I don't, I, there is, I do not have a conclusion. I think it's individual. I do not have a conclusive answer for this. There is a theory that says that the heart cannot feel until the heart has cracked open. Generally speaking, when people experience heartache, 
they are more sensitive, they should be more sensitive to the fact that they can also inflict heartache upon somebody else. But there are also people who grow up in a loving environment. <laughs> yes, we hear stories about them. They have families that love them. There's no violence, there's no alcoholism, nobody beats them, nobody, you know, leaves them in a mall. And they have a wonderful, loving experience and they trust the world and they're happy people and they're happy kids and they have happy friendships and they have happy family and they're all connected and everybody's good. And then they get into a relationship and it's fabulous. Don't know. That's why I say I honestly don't know. All right, here we go. M.R. Topar, 499. Hi, join a dance community for physical touch and connection. Love this. Thank you everyone for helping everybody here. Uh, Argentine tango, for example, very, very, very sexy. I just amended um, one of my clients' profiles because they asked her what she was nerdy about, and she said something about the truth. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I got no idea what that is. I would be, I would not date you. So we said the tango because it's very sexy and it's kind of like leads to questions and prompts. You don't need to know much to start. Love you all, Mr. Topar. Thank you so much. What a great, great, great idea. Um, let's see. Let's see. Massages are good. Please, uh, let's see. It, uh, Muscat, if you, if you, you've got a lot to say here. And I, I really, I want to finish the show today, keep everybody so they can go on with their business. If you have a question about your relationship, please think of getting a consultation. I can do pretty well here reading from a paragraph, but I'm guessing. Just, just do it. Yeah, I can really help you out. But start with breakup triage first. Um, now that I have the opportunity, I want to, oh, Den, hi, tell you that you're very inspirational and I absolutely love your videos. Greetings from Dennis from the Netherlands. Thank you so much, my dear. I really appreciate that. Okay, um, I have a friend that's going through the same thing. You're all helping each other. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. You have your freedom, you have your sanity, you have your sleep, you can be lazy, you can fart in bed. You don't have to deal with their problems if they're being irrational, pissy, or nasty. You don't have to deal with their temper or their quirks, okay? You don't have to tiptoe on eggshells. That's good. But remember also that we are here for you. For those of you, I do encourage love. Love starts with you, okay? If you are lonely, if you are sad, if you are like, oh my God, I need a partner, I need a partner, please, I want you to reverse your thinking because that is actually not how you get love. Love can only, only happen when you have an opening of love within yourself, okay? You can have people love you and still you will not feel love because love originates within you. And you want to know what love feels like? Hold a baby, pet a puppy, ride a horse, do stand in nature, pray to God, do whatever. Look at the things that are beautiful. Hold a family member. Embrace a friend. Then you will know what love feels like. And once you feel that love, I want all of you to know that you have sovereignty over your love. Nobody gets to give it to you and nobody gets to take it away from you. It belongs to you and you only. You are the bank. You are not the miserable person praying for a little deposit st stub. I wrote that in breakup triage. It's number. It's step number seven. You own the bank, but you must discover that truth. It is not something you know at 20, probably not something you know at 30. Maybe because I'm a late bloomer, you'd have to learn it later in life as I did. But when you have that aha moment, like, oh, oh my God, that's it. It's like the heavens part. And the sun comes down and you're like, oh, that's it. And you will never, ever feel bereft or lonely again because you own the bank. Everybody, thank you so much. Thank you all of my contributors today. I absolutely love you. Thank you for all of you who stayed with me for the full hour. Check out the merch page. You are going to like it. You're not going to see everything that's available. We've got such cute stuff. Uh, keep the dream, replace the person. Yep. For those of you who are upgrading your design, it's not me, it's you. Yet when they breadcrumb, ghost, whatever, that's not you. That's their issue. 
and we are servants only to our dreams, not to society's expectations. That's what we have as of today, and we're going to be having more of my quotes. Make a consultation. Just do it. I promise you that it will be more effective than you can even imagine, and I work very quickly and thoroughly. I'm not going to sign you up for months in advance and hit you up for five and six figures. I can fix you in 45 minutes or an hour. You have an option of both, okay? We can get to the root cause. Dating games guide. You're getting played outside. You think things are happening. You're not in control. People are making you nuts and you can't quite isolate what's going on. Pick it up, the dating games guide. The link is in all the information below in the description. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to my Gnarly Cat and all my different members here. Thank you, those of you who joined me today. Thank you for the people who are working as my mods. I really appreciate it. My love to you all. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.